Hi everyone, today we'll compare Yamaha 842TS Custom and Yamaha 642TS II Neo Euphonium side by side, as well as determine the pros and the cons of both instruments. In this video I will compare sound, centering, response time, intonation, mechanics, ergonomics, accessories, design, and price. But before we do that, head to patreon.com slash matonis if you'd like to support my work. As a perk, you will receive download links to materials used in my educational videos such as exercises, recordings, and more, so if you'd like to support my channel, please consider becoming one of my patrons. But most importantly, if you feel like my videos are worth watching, please help me grow the channel by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, leaving a comment down below, and of course hitting the subscribe button as well as the notification bell below. YouTube loves high engagement on videos and that's when it recommends it to other people, so I rely on word of mouth as well as you sharing my work. With that out of the way, let's have a look at Yamaha Euphoniums. We'll start by comparing sound. Both euphoniums have some great tone qualities while being very different at the same time. Neo is for sure a darker, more traditional sounding instrument, while 842 has a more brilliant, resonant tone. So how does all of this translate into performance use? Yamaha 842 has slightly more prominent mid-range frequencies. Mid-range is between 500 and 2000 Hz range, and it's what usually determines the presence of the sound. Human ears are very sensitive to these frequencies. In other words, euphoniums that are particularly rich in these frequencies will cut through better, especially in larger ensembles with a variety of different instruments. These frequencies at the same time will make the instrument sound brighter, speaking in our brass terms. From my personal experience, the larger the venue the more instruments like Yamaha 842 excel. In nice theaters the warmth of sound is rarely an issue, unlike clarity and prominence, and that's where 842 really shines with delivery of crystal clear, brilliant sound with great resonance. Neo on the other hand is more dominant in low mid-range and bass range frequencies. 60 to 250 Hz range is considered a bass range and will determine how thick the sound will be. 250 to 500 Hz range is called low mid-range and is most often described as bass presence range. Euphoniums that are very rich in these frequencies will have what we usually call a dark, traditional tone within euphonium community, and Yamaha 642 falls into that category. Neo is clearly designed with European brass tradition in mind with expectation of the most mellow singing sound possible. Although this unique sound presents challenges in blending with uh, other wind and brass instruments, 642 sounds excellent with piano, especially as a soloistic instrument. Despite the sound not being as prominent and clear as Yamaha 842, Neo compensates with slightly better projection. Even with microphone being further away from the bell due to ergonomics, which I'll get to later in this video, Neo is still considerably louder than Yamaha Custom. Neo's sound might not spread as well as 842, but it is round, dark, and really pleasing to listen to in melodic lines. 
At the end of the day, it's going to be apples and oranges. Both instruments have a really good sound and will come down to your own preference. Over the last couple of years, I've been leaning towards slightly more cylindrical sounding euphoniums personally. While Neo definitely has an edge in traditional solo tone, I like the versatility of 842 sound a bit better. Again, this is just my personal opinion, I would highly recommend you try both horns yourself since they are vastly different. Next we move on to centering. This is where Neo will blow your mind. For a while now I've been saying that Adams is the king of centering, well, we might just have ourselves a rivalry here. Yamaha 642 is either the most or at least top two most secure euphoniums I've ever tried. Every note locks in great, high register is very centered and I could move my air with as much power as I want to without fear of splitting a note. Centering on 842 is very good and consistent by any measurements with exception of maybe high concert B and super C sharp. However, Neo has a, such a fantastic centering that even a very well centered euphonium like Yamaha Custom is no match when comparing side by side. Not only Yamaha 642 is superior in centering, but it might just be the most centered euphonium currently on the market. While Neo is certainly the more centered euphonium, Yamaha Custom has an edge in response time. It is a weird combination since it is slightly harder to find great centering but if you do, 842 plays noticeably easier than Yamaha 642. Great response time on Custom makes articulation, especially in the bottom range, a walk in the park which is a fantastic quality to have in a band repertoire. Neo on the other hand is slightly stuffier, even though it has far less back pressure than euphoniums like Sterling or Wilson, there is a noticeable difference in clarity and articulation when comparing both instruments side by side. Response time is an area that Yamaha 842 does extremely well at. Intonation tendencies on both instruments are very similar and overall intonation is really good. There are three things that I always look for in this area. First being abnormally out of tune notes between low concert B flat or treble C and high concert B flat or treble C. As soon as we go to super or pedal range, intonation becomes much more skill and less instrument related. Therefore, I'm mainly focusing on those two specific octaves. Notes that are slightly flat or slightly sharp don't bother me all that much because it is easily fixed by listening and it varies from player to player based on their mouthpiece choice and ambushes setup, making it hard to tell which one's causing it. Second thing I look for is an alternative keys or trigger option that fixes those abnormally out of tune notes in a simple to use manner. Last thing is the capacity to adjust the intonation on main slide which I'll explain in a minute. As I've mentioned earlier, both instruments have a really good intonation overall, but there are some notes that you should look out for. Both euphoniums have a very flat low concert B or treble C sharp when using second and fourth valve which is a standard combination for compensating euphoniums. However, you could fix that with the use of 1, 2 and 3 alongside half of trigger down.
Middle concert G or treble A is sharp on both horns on 1 and 2. However, it is perfect with third valve as an alternative or three quarters of trigger down on 1 and 2. concert E flat or a treble F on first valve is really sharp on both instruments but it is spot on with either full trigger down or one and three as an alternative finger combination. Concert E or treble F sharp was surprisingly well in tune on both euphoniums, but concert F or treble G was once again sharp on both Neo and 842. A little less on Neo where I could get away with half trigger or one and three as an alternative finger combination and you would for sure need a full trigger on Yamaha Custom. High concert B flat or treble C is another sharp note both instruments have in common, but full trigger down or two and three as an alternative finger combination fixes the problem. Even with all these notes I brought out, I would still put both Yamaha euphoniums into category of a really good intonation comparing it to our market standards. The amount of abnormally out of two notes is reasonably low in comparison to some of the other top line euphoniums and all of the out of two notes have an easy fix, especially if you go with trigger option. It is also worth mentioning that the vast majority of the notes I singled out are sharp, which is much better than flat. I would always lean towards lipping notes down than up if that was my my only way of getting it in tune. In this aspect both Neo and 842 are extremely comparable. However, there is one difference that puts Yamaha custom ahead of Neo in intonation. Often when we play with other wind or brass musicians the intonation changes within the duration of rehearsal or concert, usually becoming sharper. It normally starts with high brass due to their smaller mouthpieces and higher back pressure, on instruments such as trumpets and horns for example. Not only low brass tends to stay in pitch longer before going sharp, but we are also the ones who are supposed to be adjusting to the highest pitched instruments. Therefore, you always want your main tuning slide to have room to move in. When tuning to B-flat with Yamaha 842, I had to pull out around an inch on my main slide, which is what you want ideally. With Yamaha Neo, B-flat was spot on with the main slide being fully in, which is likely going to cause flatness issues in ensembles with other wind or brass players. You will definitely want to avoid mouthpieces with short chunk on Neo, and even though pitch to pitch relation is very similar between both Yamahas, I would have to give the intonation to Yamaha Custom. Mechanics are very good on both instruments. Valves are not completely noiseless, but they are quiet enough to where it would never bother me or anyone sitting in the audience.
Not a big fan of plastic valve guides in general, but I do recognize the reduced noise and if I had to pick a guide containing plastic, it would be Yamaha's guides with metal inserts. Metal insert plastic guides have a much better longevity than pure plastic guides used in Besson and Sterling for example. Pure plastic valve guides break easy and unpredictably, often without any warning signs. On Yamaha's, once plastic wears off, the guide will not break due to metal insert. Instead, it will start making more noise, which will indicate it's time to replace it, which is a much better alternative. Both instruments have steel springs that are not as quiet and smooth in motion as plastic coda springs, but the speed was very good on both Yamaha's. All the slides are built extremely well, with a very smooth motion even after being shipped in boxes without any grease on, indicating an excellent craftsmanship. New trigger system is fantastic. Buttery smooth movement, range of motion is perfectly designed according to intonation tendencies. On top of that, it has adjustable positioning, angle and stroke of the lever plate which guarantees functionality and comfort for people with any hand size. The only small thing it's missing is a rubber protection ring where main slide and pipe connects. It is not going to be an issue unless you use your trigger with the main slide fully in. If you keep a thumb on the trigger on the way back, there is no issue. However, once the contact is lost, which might happen if you had a passage that requires quick use of trigger, it will make a noticeably slamming noise. Again, will not be a problem if you pull your main slide at least a millimeter out, but something you should be aware of. Motion and functionality wise, it's sharing top two spots on the current market alongside Besson trigger system. Lastly, there is another small, odd detail I noticed considering it's Yamaha's top of the line euphoniums. Fourth valve guard was extremely stiff on both instruments, in fact, the stiffest guards I've ever tried on any euphoniums period. Not a big deal at all, but something I would normally expect to higher standard on professional instruments. Despite that, I thought that mechanics were really good overall, highly functional and very comparable on both euphoniums. Ergonomics are very different between Neo and 842. Both instruments are listed as 26 inches or 66.4 centimeters in height on Yamaha's website. However, after measuring myself, I got 28 inches or 71 centimeters instead, which means that either Yamaha has wrong numbers listed on their website or my measuring tape is completely off. Not a very relevant detail, but I just thought that it was kind of funny. With that in mind, that's about the only spec that Neo and Custom have in common here. The lead pipe of Neo is 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters below the top of the bell, whereas 842 is 8.65 inches or 22 centimeters. If we looked at the width measurements at a level where the fourth valve is located, Neo is 14.2 inches or 36 centimeters wide in comparison to 842 13.4 inches or 34 centimeters. 842 will have the weight displayed a little higher on your body due to the lead pipe placement as well as the center of gravity a bit closer to your body, which will be great if you're an average size person. Ergonomics of Yamaha Custom will allow you to put less pressure onto your left forearm and shoulders and more weight on your upper chest, which I personally love. If you're a slightly larger individual, you might find that Neo is a little bit more comfortable with more space both between your core and instrument due to the center of gravity being further away, as well as the instrument hanging lower due to the lead pipe placement. At the end of the day, I would suggest you try both horns to see which one feels more comfortable. There isn't a good objective way to tell which ergonomics are better, but I personally found Yamaha Custom much more comfortable to sustain in an upright position with my body type. Both instruments come with a different hard case. Yamaha Custom has an EPC82 case which is dark brown color. Inside there is a compartment box for your accessories like oils and etc. Separate compartment for mouthpiece above the bell and compartment on the side for sheet music. It does not have a key lock but has a very solid exterior which makes it suitable for carrying as a checked baggage on flights. Neo comes with an EPC63 case which is almost identical to 82 
continue with the addition of key lock and slightly lighter brown color. Both cases are great, but obviously if I had to pick one, I would go with EPC-63 simply because it has a key lock. Both instruments come with a factory mouthpiece. Neo comes with a SL-51L mouthpiece, while Custom has an EP-53DL mouthpiece. I haven't tried them myself, but it's worth mentioning in case you don't own a mouthpiece yourself. Both euphoniums have a manual, valve oil, slide grease and hex wrench for trigger adjustment. 842 also has a spit catcher for 3 out of 4 valves, while Neo doesn't. Considering accessories being almost identical, if I had to make a choice between having a case with a key lock or no key lock on a case and a spit catcher, I would definitely go with a key lock. Moving on to design, 842 has an, an impeccable silver finish, a deep silver shine with a superbly smooth look. Again, top 2 on my silver finished list alongside Besson Prestige. Yamaha Custom has a very luxurious looking golden plated trim, which adds to a great traditional looking design. Neo on the other hand has a bit more basic looking design with no golden plating, which is not really that important to me personally. However, the silver finish seemed to be slightly lesser quality than 842. A lighter, less smooth look which was really exposing my fingerprints on parts I was holding the instrument at. It usually means that euphonium is likely to be more prone to staining. Unlike 842, Neo comes with a lacquer option which I haven't had a chance to try unfortunately, but it is an option you could consider. Both euphoniums have identical pearl valve tops which is once again going to be up to your personal preference. I'm not really picky in terms of design personally, but clearly Yamaha 842 has a more refined look than Neo, which is probably one of the reasons why Yamaha Custom is at a higher selling price. And with that in mind, Although price might vary based on store, but on average Yamaha Custom will cost you around 8500 US dollars, while Yamaha Neo will vary based on finish and trigger option. With fully set up silver model it stands around 7400 US dollars. Brian Music is kind enough to give my subscribers a 10% discount on all euphoniums with a promo code Matonis, which puts Custom at a $7635.59 and Neo at $6595. $5.19. If you are looking for a traditional sounding euphonium with a fantastic centering, great sense of security, good mechanics and highly functional trigger system, Yamaha Neo is probably the best bang for your buck on the current market. Even though there are some details that Yamaha could improve on their Neo series, I feel very comfortable recommending this instrument to players of any level. Yamaha Custom is one of the most versatile euphoniums currently on the market. It will be a fantastic option not only for band players, but also for people who play solos on a regular basis. Very good intonation, some of my favorite ergonomics on the market, great response time, very resonant, clear, brilliant sound makes Yamaha Custom one of my top picks for euphoniums currently. 842 has a bit more refined details than Neo, which is probably the reason why the price is higher. However, in comparison to all the brands that offer gold trim finish with trigger system, Yamaha Custom is still one of the more wallet friendly professional line instruments. With that in mind I would highly recommend you try both euphoniums since they offer a very different package when comparing side by side. Once again, my subscribers can get a 10% discount with the promo code Matonis at Brian Music, as well as a signature Lift Strong, Play Strong represent t-shirt with any euphonium purchases in their store. The link is in the description box below so check it out. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you're interested in online coaching, don't hesitate to get in touch with me, you'll find my contact details in the description box below. I will be making more review videos in the near future, reviews including on tubas and trombones, so keep an eye for it. A special thanks to Bryden and all the other patrons for supporting my channel, I really appreciate it my friends. For now, enjoy your week and I will see you very soon in the upcoming videos.